Hello everyone and welcome to this beginner recorder lesson. This is the first video in this series. In this lesson, we're going to be learning the parts of the recorder, how to hold it. We're going to be talking about these cool things called finger diagrams, and we'll also learn to play a tune or two. Specifically, we'll be learning the notes B, A, G. So I have my soprano recorder here. It's nothing fancy. It's just something that I bought off Amazon and I spray painted it this uh, neon orange color so that it uh, glows in black light or UV light. I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. So let's start with the parts of the recorder. When you get your recorder, it might be disassembled into three pieces like this. This top part here is called the head joint and it has the mouthpiece on top. This is the part that we will be blowing into. This piece connects into the body of the recorder. And what you want to do when you're assembling this is you just want to make sure that the window, this part up here, aligns with the holes on the front, the finger holes. This bottom part's called the foot joint. And what you want to do with this is you also want to just align it so that the holes are in line, but you also want to turn it back a little bit this way. If you're looking at your recorder, if you're looking at it, it looks like the bottom joint is turned to the left slightly so that the holes are off centered. The reason you want it off centered is because our pinky is shorter than the rest of our fingers and we have to compensate for that unless your pinky is not shorter than the other fingers, which would be strange. <laughs> so we have all these finger holes or tone holes on the recorder and they all have assigned numbers. There's also one on the back that's covered by our thumb usually and this is the hole zero. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And towards the bottom, we actually get two holes in one, two for ones. It's helpful to know these numbers because the finger diagrams that tell us how to play notes and songs will refer to each of these holes as a number. So now let's learn to hold the recorder. Holding the recorder is pretty simple. We mainly use our left hand. And what we wanna do is we wanna use our thumb to cover the hole on the back, that's hole number zero. And we wanna use our index finger or pointer finger to cover the first hole on top like that and to hold a recorder, that's all we need are, are these two holes covered. So you could actually just play it like that just by blowing into it and covering zero and the first hole and that is the note B. But it feels more stable if we get our right hand down here and we have this little thumb rest that goes on top of our right thumb like this and the, the recorder just sits on that. And if we're not pressing down any holes with our right hand, what we can do is we can just take our fingers and rest them off to the side like this, touching our fingertips to the body of the recorder, but not covering any holes just for extra support. So now let's talk about finger diagrams. These are actually super helpful to understand because they're going to teach us how to play different notes on the recorder. For example, this first one here, the note B, shows that some of the holes are filled in and the solid ones are the ones that we're supposed to cover with our, with our fingers. So we can see that the hole zero is covered or filled in. That would be our thumb on the back. And the first tone hole is also covered and that's gonna be used uh, covered by our pointer finger on the front like this. So let's go ahead and play that B now. So this is a good time to talk about how much air you need to play the recorder. I purposely played that last note too hard so you could hear how harsh it sounded. And something to think about is we don't really need a lot of air to play the notes on the recorder. So if it, feel, if it sounds harsh or loud or really shrill, that means you're probably blowing too hard into the recorder. And you just wanna keep in mind those around you, your family, your friends, or your pets. They will not like it if you play very loudly into this instrument. It is very ear piercing, shrill. And I guarantee you, if you do it, you will send small animals running in all directions. <laughs> <laughs> I once heard a teacher say that you only need enough air from one nostril to play the recorder. And of course, I was teaching fourth grade students at the time, and I told them this, and guess what they did? <laughs> Had to see if it worked. So let's go ahead and play that B again. We're going to play it three times in a row like this. Okay, great. Now let's learn the note A. As we see in this finger diagram here, we have the zero hole covered, the one, and now the two. So basically, if we were playing B and not, 
we wanted to go to an A, we would just add our middle finger here to the second tone hole. Let's try that now. If you get something that sounds like this, it probably means that one of the holes on the recorder isn't being covered all the way. So for example, if I slightly move my thumb on the back while playing, you'll hear that it, the notes keep changing. So you have to make sure that the holes are completely covered to get the right note. Something that's also worth mentioning is that the way we breathe is important. We want to support our breath by breathing low. So for example, if you take a deep breath in, you want to feel your stomach poof out because that means that your diaphragm, which is the muscle that holds up your lungs, is relaxing down and we can feel that. And you'll get the most supportive air from this part of our body instead of trying to breathe up high. When we breathe up high, we have very shallow, unsupported breaths. And it's just a good thing to do in life in general to breathe deeply. It means that you have a relaxed diaphragm and this can actually help with uh, anxiety and nervousness and just being calm in general. So let's try something new. Let's go back to B and play that note three times. Now let's go to A and do that three times. Now let's play along with this jam track. Just so you know, that jam track was from my book, Recorder Jams for Kids. If you want to check it out, you can find it here or on my Shopify site. We're going to be using a lot of those jam tracks from my book in this video series. I find that it's a lot easier to learn by doing, like playing along with a jam track, than just trying to count or play with a metronome. Plus, it's way more fun. Also, if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. It helps support me and it encourages me to make more videos for you. So let's learn one more note for today. It's G, and to play G, we're gonna be covering zero, one, two, and three, like this. So on the finger diagram for G, we see that zero, one, two, and three are covered. And then we see that line below, which means that's where our left hand ends and our right hand begins. So we're gonna be using everything but the pinky on the left hand. Now let's play the notes B, A, G. Let's do that again. So now let's do the classic song, Hot Cross Buns. This is about bread now. I don't know what you're thinking about. So we're gonna go B, a, G, B, A, G. Let's try that. Then we're gonna do four G's and four A's. And then B, A, G again. So let's do the whole song. I'll put the notes up there in the screen for you. Awesome.